Okay, everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the Ruppy Physical Preparation Pyramid. Video number five, level three, special prep, aka the icing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm your host, I guess, as always, DJ, I'm here, um, introducing you to the Physical Preparation Pyramid. It's, it's my own piece of original work. Um, it is based off the back of everything I've seen, experienced, seen in the science, but also really what you will see with Ruppy and, and once you go through the whole preparation pyramid, if this is the first part of the pyramid that you're on, we're going to end. Okay, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Ruppy Physical Preparation Pyramid Series. I'm TJ Jankowski. If you haven't seen this before, I am the guy behind Ruppy Muscle. Um, this video will be part five of the phys rugby physical preparation pyramid addressing level three of the pyramid special preparation aka the icing if this is your first time watching the rugby muscle youtube channel or if it's your first time being introduced to the physical preparation pyramid itself i suggest first of all don't leave this video without giving it a thumbs up if you're watching give it a thumbs up it really does help out the channel Comment below any questions as you go along um, and enjoy this video series. If you are new, this is the pyramid itself. I would suggest pausing this video, going back, going through the whole playlist itself because what we are addressing today is the very tip of the pyramid, the very top end. And as we'll get into, you'll understand that this stuff is not, not, not necessarily useless, but your time is very much spent or better off spent in building up the rest of the area and this is just the rest of the pyramid this is just the icing on the cake this is the stuff that will sort of top you off as um you head into playing the much you can um but it definitely has its limitations but this is this this is also the sexy stuff this is stuff that people want to do this is the most fun um, air quotes because some of it can be brutal but this is the most fun part of rugby training so a, a lot of what people want to see when they come across the rugby muscle youtube channel is they you know quote unquote functional training stuff that really will transfer onto the field that they can see and they can feel transfer onto the field as they're doing them so um really if if this is your first video and you're like no no come on i want to do the i i'm already elite i need to do this stuff i would i would beg you to reconsider i would say go back watch the introduction video first watch the um foundation the level one before getting into this stuff and there's a reason this is the pyramid the tip of the pyramid not anywhere else and we'll actually get into that but it i, c I can't keep overemphasizing how um and you'll see this video isn't just going to bag on these training techniques but really this stuff let me finish my coffee this stuff is the icing on the cake it's it's you know if you're looking at a cake competition, you know, if you're just judging it by how it looks, right, it's the same as any sort of training program. If you just judge the program by how it looks, you don't really understand and you don't understand the rest of it, then you could think that the, the, the training program that has all this icing, has all this fancy stuff is going to be the superior program, but you'd be absolutely wrong. Likewise, if you were judging a cake contest and you saw this beautiful icing on the right you know even if the cake tasted like burnt fucking ash and and just crap okay that you, you'd still do if you're just judging it by how it looks you would think the icing was the, the one on the right was better but uh if if that was the case and that the, the cake on the right actually did like taste terrible and it was like fundamentally was flawed it didn't taste like a cake at all then the cake on the left is going to win every single time and i'm not the biggest fan of british bake-off i don't watch any of that stuff but <laughs> You get the point, right? It's yeah. You, know, you can make something look great, but if there's a fundamental flaw in how it, um, how it actually tastes or performs when it comes to the program, then, then the icing. It doesn't matter. You can't cover this crap up with icing. It, you know, this is only the 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 you know the icing on top of the cake. So, with that being said, what are the you know the tips? What are the top things that? What are the components that make up the tip of the pyramid i've referred to them as special strength um and footwork I've, I've i've sort of combined them into the same thing mobility and anaerobic endurance those are the three things that i, I see people that are worthwhile spending their time and you'll see that this isn't all, also necessarily what you would think it is because these are only you know th these are very limited and if you take in all the different training components that we've addressed in this pyramid in totality You'll see that there are things that there are a lot of things that 
rugby players seem to do that are a complete waste of their time. And you could maybe hinge them being into one of these categories and one of these training components. But that doesn't mean that everything has its place, right? You can justify a lot of different training methods, but not everything has its place. And they should all fit in within this pyramid. That's the reason I created this. Is the reason to give you context to everything training-wise that you do. So with that being said, special strength is literally just your, your typical specific movements, right? So you're going to overload them beyond what you'd find in the game, whether that's doing over speed work. So you're running faster than you would be capable of. Um, in a game or you're doing some sort of you know um, scrum or prowler pushing a uh, sled pushing or some some sort of um, scenario where you're pushing it but you're overloading a specific movement that would help you in a game you've seen it with like line out lifts um, where you can overload and these are everything that you see that's quote-unquote functional this isn't talking about unstable surfaces or anything uh, crazy it's the specific movements that you would see in a game and you figured out a way to overload them and to adapt them um so that you're you are you can train them in the gym and you can train them a higher intensity or a higher force output or even sometimes at like a lower intensity where you can specifically work it um so that you can transfer it onto the field more often than not this is completely unnecessary because if you are getting generally stronger as you'll see that will still transfer to the skill you know if you as long as you practice the skill as well mobility is you know specific movement to um specific movement work that's going to allow extra range of motion in certain periods where you you have either tightness or actually yeah just where you have tightness um, it can be movement based it can be stretch based and it's done to allow yourself to have more range of motion in certain joint areas or in, within certain muscle groups to allow you to execute a certain skill or get into a certain position better. This could be done if someone's got really tight hamstrings or hips that, it, that they can't hold their jackal position very well, or if they've got really tight shoulders and they can't hold a line-out um, position very well. Mobility might be something that would help that. And aerobic endurance is that real tough training that's done at the, usually at the end of preseason, or actually all of preseason in, in clubs. Um, and it's done for... Uh, it, it, you know it's done to increase the the purpose of it is that is to increase your your power output in medium length but high intensity environments it's not going to be long length because you literally cannot keep up high intensity for a long period of time and when i'm talking long length i'm talking you know 20 minutes plus considering a game of rugby is 80 minutes 20 minutes plus is still not overly long high intensity stuff usually caps at around 20 minutes at most um and and of that the intensity is not what i would call high um, the environments usually seem to make a big difference in high high level rugby is applying to those moments where the ball is in play for a long period of time and the intensity stays higher and higher and higher and higher and it's a team that gasses out first that sometimes ends up losing a score you've seen it um when you watch some real high level rugby sometimes it's you know you have a, a period where the ball is in play for a real long period of time and the teams are just waiting for each other to break but the intensity does not drop you don't see this um, and this is why this is icing this isn't standard practice you don't see this type of rugby being played anywhere below like top level international rugby the ball will stay in play but the intensity will either stay a little bit start a little bit lower or it'll be a little bit lower the whole time people on the field will get their break they'll be in the defensive line or in the attacking line they'll be holding their positions you're not always um sprinting or running fast or in the action there are a lot of times where they even if the ball is in play for a long period of time there's a lot of time where there's down period so that's not what we're addressing with that we're only addressing when it's constant high intensity and the reason that this stuff is the icing it's not just because there's not as much of a need for it like we've said here there's not you know these things are very specific for very specific circumstances so you would argue well there's not too much of a need for these things that's why they're the icing yes but they're also the icing because the lower you go on the pyramid the more general you get with the training concept and the more carryover you have. If you're doing mobility training, you're only going to be able to train to be mo more mobile. Whereas if you are doing, um, you know, full range of motion strength training, you're going to be training your mobility. If you're doing stiff-legged deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts for a full range of motion, you're going to be training your hamstring mobility at the same time whilst also getting stronger, whilst also get growing, your, uh, growing your muscles in your posterior chain. So 
when we talk about the the levels of the pyramid going up and being more specific that means when you go down you're being more general and that gives you more uh, output for the use the, you know the time and the the training methods that you are using at the lower level that's one of the main reasons that this pyramid makes so much sense and so we can see this when we're looking at general versus specific training methodology i've used the example here where the this graph is representing of overall scrum success or scrum output success okay you've got your gym right here who is just a big guy but he has no real experience on the field scrummaging and so he gets take you know he 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 will be losing more scrums than he wins against the veteran even though he's significantly stronger than a veteran because the veteran knows how to manipulate his body he knows the skill of scrummaging key point here also scrummaging not scrumming scrummaging is the word now the veteran has a lot of skill but he because he is generally weak you know all it takes is for that gym rat to get a little bit of skill and the gym rat will easily get the better of the veteran and that's just the case of being generally bigger generally stronger he's got more mass to move or he's got more force behind the skill that he is um, showing so he still doesn't have the skill of the veteran but he's able to get the better of him because he's generally physically stronger and generally bigger therefore he can win out that um, win out that scrummage exchange now the problem with this uh, gym rat if they thought they were an expert and they did special strength training too early is that they miss out on the general scrummaging skill that they could have done if they just practiced getting better at scrummaging they just practiced the scrum itself so they just got reps and reps and reps and reps with another prop at, track, uh, at training time or they just generally got stronger those things are going to give you as you can see here much more uh development and much more uh, of a path to being a high level player see the pro level player here and the elite level player they are generally a lot stronger you know the, the pro level player is not that much stronger um on this graph than the uh than the gym rat with the skill or than the gym rat in general now if it's the elite general strength isn't that much stronger but you could see that the general scrummaging skill is so much bigger and again the general scrummaging skill is not so much bigger than the veteran but they're so much stronger they're a combination of both of those general traits that's what makes them the elite players that's what makes them the pro level players the high level players then that's when the special strength might actually make a bit of a difference um so you can see here how this you know how the special strength and the specific strength only can tap out at the end again you've here got the the one the example to the left of the pro level player he specialized a little bit too early so maybe he was a, a you know a young phenom player or something and he was he, he decided to just to really like hone in on his special strength stuff when he was 15 or, or, or young and just started you know, developing his, his strength he's missed out on a lot of general strength that could have got him to a much higher level earlier and now even the gym rat that's, that's messing around, even the veteran is still getting the better of him because he hasn't taken advantage of that all that general strength potential that he could have done by working on the lower levels of the pyramid. So, like, I know that the special strength stuff is the fancy stuff and it's the stuff that looks like it would have the most benefit, but it's, it's just not. It's not the way it works. The general strength components, the general training components are always going to give you that so much of a better base and potential to then be a better player there's two ends of the spectrum right and you shouldn't cross them too much you've got your skills um and you've got your strength stuff keep them apart they should stay apart and they well will work together and synergistically as you get stronger you give you give yourself more potential to get more skills and you develop those skills with that strength you don't develop them at the same time um it's also you've got a longer route to to go on when you're building general skill and when you're building general strength there's just so many different ways to improve special strength there's there's you've got a very limited use amount and there's not as long a road so there's only a small capacity you have to build with the special stuff and this could be applied to any position any sort of special skill in rugby it could be tackling uh passing kicking you know i get asked regularly like how, how what sort of strength thing should i do to kick further well you just practice kicking yes you could if you got generally stronger you have more ability you have more potential to try and kick longer but in general it's the skill of kicking is going to give you the biggest output okay so with all of that being said you've also got to understand that even with that like you've got the um the special strength work the, the footwork mobility all this all your skills that you're trying to improve are going to get indirect training as well um 
overload training through your rugby training so you know if you're if you're just playing lots of games you're going to get you're going to practice the skill and potentially if you've got good practice if you've got a good coach who's um making you you know work really aggressively in the ruck area more so than you would do in a game then you're still getting that indirect training through that system as well you're still being able to build up either your mobility or your core strength or whatever it is by you by doing those skills um at a higher level more and more and more as you get into rugby training obviously as i'm recording this video uh there is still a global pandemic on and we're not training as much but when you get back to it you'll see that there's just not as much of a need for it during the season and as because um I should, well, actually i'm going to preempt myself so I'll, I'll go on to the point i was going to make in a little bit so in general understand that the indirect training also means that there's less of a need for to, or to train this top level this icing directly and it even receives not only the indirect training through rugby but also through the general components that i was talking about earlier so special strength is already taken care of for the most part by working on these other general areas likewise footwork is taken is is improved dramatically by working on these general areas um, it's also if you look at the foundation there's also some sort of genetic component to it as well some people have really good feet because they were just born with really good feet some people are really fast and that allows them to have better footwork right so there's so much more involved than just working you know the icing the stuff that you see same thing for mobility same thing for anaerobic endurance and you can pause this video at any point and, and figure out which ones if you want if you thought oh i wanted to improve these things now you can look at the general areas to make sure that you get better improvements want to get this video done a little bit faster so let's move on to how we would train these different components so special strength it's um you know you're training it for a short period of time you'll get short-term gains and they'll ideally transfer to your game but once you've got them into your game then they get ingrained by you do it by you experiencing that benefit in a game so if you work your special strength to help you scrummage better then you hit the field then you actually scrummage better once you start scrummaging better you don't need to keep training that special strength the rugby itself takes care of that if you don't have the rugby to take care of that and you don't train that component you'll just drop off so uh, like i said we're in a pandemic now it doesn't make sense to train the special strength areas right now because you, you'd have to keep them going throughout until we get back to a time when we're all playing rugby regularly so i would advise to stay away from this until you're you know that you've got imminent rugby available um it some some movements can can give you a lot of fatigue some of them uh, are okay but again it's that high drop off that we want to avoid they're also and, and that's what I, I put here by them being highly dependent on the continual application it means you've got to do them all the time to keep them getting better or to stop them from regressing because it's that uh, the very top the higher you go in this uh, general to specific uh, sort of timeline the uh, faster your com your training components will leave um and sometimes they can be difficult to access. Sometimes you need special equipment or sometimes you need a, a training partner, you know, a specific training partner or some sort of um, other material or modality that you need to help you with this um, training method. And it's just not available. So it's, it's kind of inconvenient and, it, and it's just a little bit awkward. Mobility is quite in vogue right now. It's starting to little, drop off a little bit, thank God. Um, this isn't to do with addressing... Um, you know, to, to making you completely inj injury proof it's not how it works mobility can help you in in certain scenarios but not not really okay there's a lot more to rebut than just being mobile now it is best done indirectly as i've hinted to earlier with the weight training so um if you do full range of motion if you utilize the full range of motion with your lifts you're going to um, get strength in those areas and then become more and more and more mobile in those areas so that's how you should be training your mobility now if you have certain areas where there's a weakness or that you have certain areas that need to be um, brought up with strength or need to be more mobile either for a certain skill or to prevent you know some sort of injury rehab then you can get into this with either some movement rehab or some stretch based movement there's a lot more to robustness than just being mobile so be aware of that also be aware of the fact that it gives mobility training itself 
gives you a fatigue cost. It isn't recovery. It's, it actually um, will take away from your fatigue. So you're not doing it to recover. You're actually, you need some extra recovery from that training. If you've ever done a real tough PNF stretching session, you'll, you'll, you'll know that. You'll feel that fatigue. You'll feel sore the next day. It, it requires the body to adapt as well. So it still requires energy. It still requires recovery. Anaerobic in, endurance is massively fatiguing. Um, and it can build team togetherness. And it can build, quote, unquote, toughness. But I, 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 I'll be honest, I hate toughness. I don't think it works. I don't think it exists. I think you are either prepared, you're either a good player, and it's not built by um, pushing a person to their limits. That just doesn't work, okay? Um, come at me, old school trainers. It just doesn't, okay? There's better ways to build a stronger person than by, like, completely breaking them down. But that's for another video, I think. So, on this... or uh, 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 blah, blah, blah. So with this all in mind, let's get into actual training methods. So for special strength, you could look at scrum isometrics um, with bands as well to challenge you on, the, on your core at the same time. That can have a good um, effect for you to help your stability in the scrum. Same thing for line-out lifts and for line-out jumps. You can use bands or you can use different... Um, uh, pieces of equipment to sort of challenge the core whilst you're doing it um, you can also for the backs you can do med ball rugby passes this isn't talking about just twisting or, or, or training the general movement of twisting it's like specific situations so if you're a scrum half on the knee where you're throwing a weighted ball or you've got to dig the ball out of somewhere um, if you're doing carries or turnover drills with bands for instability on that can work as well if you're doing weighted uh, resistance on f coming from different angles or um, you're pulling out certain angles that you know, you, you're challenging your grip uh, different resisted sprints are also and again this is specific so it's specific to you what um, actual training or, or actual physical component and skill component you want to improve so you would break your skill down you look at what you want to improve how can i add resistance to that or how can i make that a higher level and more challenging all right let's train that or can i how can i make it less challenging and more um, easier to be sort of tracked and practice in the gym contact skills with bands and cable uh, or cable machines can also work as well so you're working different movement patterns in there and again you're being more specific and that can like i say for a short period of time absolutely transfer quote unquote gym strength to the skill now I'm going to say one more time, just as a reminder, if you just generally get stronger for the most part and you generally improve the physical components, you then use the skill practice to use that enhanced strength skill, uh, enhanced strength, muscular power, muscular endurance to then apply to that skill. So that's the best way to get better. But there are certain periods of time where special strength can be worked. Mobility, you can look at yoga for rugby. Um, I've had people use that with success, and, and these are people that are particularly tight. Um, PNF style stretching can have its benefit. Again, these both of these two are not recovery. Both of these two are very fatiguing in themselves. Um, and then special strengthening of smaller muscles. Again, as this is specific stuff, this would apply to you and whatever injury or prehab you would need. But this would just be done either as preparation for your training sessions or at the end of your training sessions. And then anaerobic endurance, we're looking at four times four minute gas of circuits. So you could either do uh, eight different movements for 30 seconds each, or you could have three different or four different movements and you repeat them twice for 30 seconds. Or you could have um, the problem if you go beyond 30 seconds is the intensity drops. If you do just sprint for a minute, right, you can't sprint as fast for a minute as you can for 30 seconds. So changing modalities every 30 seconds is a good way to keep that. Uh, output really 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 high um, and then you take a mini a mini rest because four minutes is of non-stop high intensity work is absolutely crazy and then you go back in to do another four minutes you build up you could do one uh, one set then two sets and three sets and four sets i wouldn't go beyond four minutes because the intensity is inevitably inevitably going to drop and it's just also a period of time you don't see rugby games where the ball stays in play for that long particularly at a high intensity so you wouldn't it's just unnecessary fatigue it's um any any much beyond that it's unnecessary fatigue it's something that you don't, aren't going to be able to adapt to. So four minutes is, is the most I would work. i try and switch modalities every 30 seconds. Tire flips, anything that you can do for a nice high intensity output. And that's kind of it for anaerobic endurance. There are millions of other different sessions. 
And I'll be honest, I think they're all shit. I think they're all just done by people that want to tire themselves out as fast as they can, that don't understand the uh, conditioning requirements to be a better rugby union player. And that's okay. And, uh, you know, this is going to fall on deaf ears. And if you've made it to the end of this video, first give it a thumbs up. But really, if you have made it this far, number one, you've made it further than me because my microphone seems to have cut out. But you, number two, you understand that there's a deeper need to uh, analyze the stuff that you're doing. You're investing a lot of time either in the gym or, you know, educating yourself and on the field and trying to become a better rugby player. Um, and you're using a lot of time, you know, your effort, you put in time in, you put an effort in. You want to make sure that it's put in the right areas. And that's really why I put this pyramid together. So, um, if you've made it this far, again, give it a thumbs up. Comment any questions you have on this pyramid. I want it for you guys. I want it to be so that you guys completely have a full understanding of how you should be training to get a better, to become a better rugby player, particularly if you're not a full-time athlete because full-time athletes have the stuff taken care of for them already. You, you um, as a, just a committed amateur, want to get the best bang for your buck and, you know, luckily enough training the general um, components is going to give you by far the best bang for your buck so go back and watch those other videos comment below any questions that you have i will be back with one more video on this pyramid before i redo the first two and that will be uh, answering all the questions i've got so far on this pyramid and answering kind of a frequently asked questions thing but you know uh, rugby muscle is just a small channel so there's not you know frequently asked is like questions that have been asked a couple of times so any questions that you have below i can explain this a little bit better for you i can really help you understand exactly what you should be doing in the gym on the field outside of your actual rugby training to become a better rugby player a better athlete with that being said i'm not really sure how to finish this video so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one